delivers. And it's intercepted in the end zone. The middle is going to be picked off. Stay in now. Stay in now. I want to be a champion. There's 11 quarterbacks on the list. Two of them that shouldn't be on there. Uh-huh. And I do believe that Dak should be on the top 100. All right. Eric Goff and Cam Newton at the end, I think Dak Prescott deserves to be on there. Brock, Parody, Tua Tonga Valoa, Jared Goff, and really, Dak Prescott. Mm. These are game managers. They're, they're not difference makers. When you say game manager, I'm not asking you to go out and win the game. I'm just asking you not to lose. Not to lose the game, exactly. Who passed the outfit for a second? <laughs> um, he literally said in the year of 2023, where it's all about NFL backups, where is Cam? Not on an NFL roster, right? So he's talking about all these NFL game managers. He sounds like the people literally tweeting at me from their basement, like, get back in the kit. Like, it's like you are at home watching me. Like, like, just, just, just turn the TV off. Probably like, in the kitchen. <laughs> like, it, it just sounds so crazy. foolish. Everyone is talking about where Cam is now. And to treat Cam as what I heard from somebody, to treat Cam as someone tweeting from their mother's basement is also wrong. I think there are some people in the sports world who owe Cam Newton an apology. The Dallas Cowboys once again show the entire NFL why. They are not to be taken serious. I remember earlier in the season when Dak Prescott was getting all of these MVP chats, MVP Dak, MVP year. Dak is up for a contract soon. Now, what are you gonna do? If you look at Dak Prescott numbers, this almost makes me so upset because if you just look at the numbers, it will tell you something different. If you did not watch the game and take away the last number, I'm gonna say 41 for 60, 403, three TDs, but then you get to the most important number of them all, two INTs, and those two INTs resulted in 14 points, and Dak always have these type of games. He plays bad, especially in beginning of games, and then all of a sudden, it's like the chariot is now coming to town, empty calories are what I like to call these, and a lot of people have adapted that same, or adopted that same premise, empty calories for Mr. Dak Prescott. The guy continues to show that once the pressure is on, he turns off. And once they were already getting beat down, Dak Prescott decides to show up and actually throw the ball a little bit. But if you look at the Green Bay Packers defense at that point in time, it was basically play prevent and just get some time off the clock so we can get out of here with a win. <sighs> Look, it's a lot of different things. Dak is not the only reason they lost, but I have to give him at least 75% of the loss in terms of the players. Defense deserves, well, I take that back. 50-50, it was equally as bad. I'm sorry. The defense was bad. Dak was bad. McCarthy was bad. Dan Quinn was bad. Everybody was bad. The score 48 to 32 does not tell the entire story. This game was not close at all. Green Bay took their foot off of the gas because they needed to. Somebody got hurt for the Green Bay Packers defense. They say, look, we need to go ahead and start getting our guys off the field. We have another game to play next week. And it was scuffle at the end. In my mind, I'm yelling like, why are you even entertaining getting into any type of trouble? Dallas is going home. You know, I would say going fishing, but it's too cold right now for any of that. But Dallas is going home, guys. They are exactly who we thought they were. And let's take time to give some love to Jordan Love. 16 for 21, 272, three touchdowns. Great game. Jordan Love played better than Dak Prescott. And this is Jordan Love's first playoff. Outplayed Dak, and it wasn't even close. Aaron Jones, 21 carries, a buck 18, three TDs. The man was running wherever he wanted to go. If he wanted to go left, he could go left. If he wanted to go right, he could go right. If he wanted to go straight downhill, he could go straight downhill. The Dallas Cowboys defense could not stop the run to save their lives. And they didn't do anything in the secondary this game either. They looked so ill-prepared for this game. It was like they just they weren't ready to play a football game. And at home, I usually give the Dallas Cowboys 
the benefit of the doubt. On the road, I felt like they were going to get beat like this. But at home, where you've been playing good all year? What? Come on, Dallas. What are you doing? Dallas, look. You have seen this time after time after time after time. It's about time for you to get rid of McCarthy and get rid of Dak. It's time to make the change. It's time to make the switch. Dak continues to play good when the pressure is off. When the pressure is on, he is gone. I'm telling you, you got to get rid of Dak. And you got to sure up the running defense. And, I mean, come on. I look, they miss Trayvon Diggs more than people thought. And I think he would have been a big difference maker on that field today if he was out there in terms of helping cover some of the wide receivers. Because every time I looked up, a wide receiver was open. They was giving them the business, okay? The wide receivers for the Green Bay Packers were giving the Dallas Cowboys defense the business, all right? Giving them the work, all right? Look, what Shady say, crazy work. Easy money. <laughs> Easy money. The entire game, I'm looking at this game, and I was very surprised. I turned it on a little bit late. It was already 7 to nothing. And I'm thinking to myself, like, Green Bay already up. And then the second quarter hit, they get a 20-piece in the second quarter. The game was over right there. Dallas gets seven points in the second quarter. The only reason, in my personal opinion, that they got that seven was because of a not really horse collar that was called on Green Bay. And it set Dallas up, like, to go on downfield and then get the score. Other than that, they probably would have went scoreless. Probably with scoreless. Going back to Dak, the man should have really had three interceptions. I forgot to bring that part up. He should have had three interceptions. The guy dropped one. I think he jumped a little bit too early, and he, he couldn't get his hands on the ball. It's just that simple. The 4-3 makes me so upset because that is such a misleading stat. 403 yards. You really got that in garbage time. CD Lamb, nine receptions, 110 yards. It was some plays where I felt like CD wasn't even trying sometimes. It, it, you can tell the frustration was sitting in. I'm not here to bash on CD. CD can only do so much. I still think he's a great receiver. Tony Pollard is not what you guys thought he would be the entire season. You really miss Zeke. I'm going to tell you another guy y'all really miss. I've been telling Dallas Cowboy fans this since this trade went down. If Amari Cooper was still on this team, do you know how wide open people would be? And I guess it wouldn't matter. Dak could probably throw him high, too far, too long, whatever. The ball's going to be going, and the wide receivers going to be standing there with their hands up. This game by the Dallas Cowboys was just a horrible display of football. And I really have not enjoyed the playoffs yet. The Texans game was entertaining for a little bit. But then the Kansas City game was not really. Now we got today, Green Bay versus the Cowboys. It was not that good. <sighs> these games just have not been that entertaining right now. And a lot of these games just have not been close at all. And so you're looking at this, though. I will say, shout out to Jordan Love. The man is going to get his money. He's going to get some money. The man is going to get paid. And when a player gets paid, I'm all about that. Shout out to Jordan Love for proving that he can do this. And he did it on a stage that was huge for him. First playoff game in Jerry World against the Dallas Cowboys. Everybody is looking all eyes are on you. Jordan Love proved that he can get it done. He can get it done. Play way better than Dak Prescott in his own building. Just imagine how this team would progress later on. This is the youngest team in the playoffs. Jordan Love balling. All right. And as of right now, it looks like Green Bay has hit out the park once again with the quarterback position. And I guess you can also attribute this to the fact that Jordan Love got to sit back, watch Aaron Rodgers work. Aaron Rodgers did the same thing, sat back, watched Brett Favre work. Green Bay was criticized for making this decision years ago when they could have taken a wide receiver. But now it's looking like this may have been the way to go after all. huh? At least right now, only the future will let us know. But right now, Jordan Love deserves all the props in the world. And I wanted to end this video off by saying that. Shout out to Green Bay Packers for getting the win. Shout out to Jordan Love. And Dallas, it's time for a reset. You're not good enough to compete. You just aren't especially when it comes to the playoffs. In the playoff, palms get sweaty, people start shaking, and it looks like Dak is a shaker. He's not a peacemaker, all right? You got to get him out. That analogy may or may not have made sense. I just wanted to rhyme. Anyways, like, comment, subscribe, guys. Let me know what you think about this entire game, and I'll see you in the next video.